Hello, I'm Nicola Dinsdale from the Wellcome Centre for Integrative Neuroimaging at the University of Oxford and today I will be presenting our work on learning scanner bias for MRI harmonisation for medical image segmentation. So today I'm going to be talking to you about what is the problem, so what is harmonisation and I'm presenting our solution and our results. So the combination of data sets is vital for providing increased statistical power, especially if you wish to consider conditions such as rare neurodegenerative diseases or want to combine data from different data, set, from different data centers. The problem is that in combining data produced on different scanners or with different acquisition protocols leads to an increase in variance and bias in the data caused by the scanner effects, not the biological differences. It has been shown that this inter-scanner variability can affect the measurements obtained from downstream analysis, such as voxel-based morphometry or lesion volume segmentation. So the aim of harmonization is to remove scanner and site effects while preserving the variability associated with biology, therefore enabling us to explore the question of interest without being affected by where the data was collected. The most common method used for, for harmonization is COMBAT, which uses a linear model to estimate a mean and variance for the to explain the differences between the RI volumes collected across sites. This is then used to scale the image derived values and has been extended to include a non-linear model and to explicitly model the bias introduced by the scanner. It is, however, limited by the fact that it assumes that a simple linear or quadratic model can sufficiently model the, variant, the, model the variance introduced by the MRI machine, which given this is a massively nonlinear system is unlikely. So we look towards domain adaptation for a solution. Domain adaptation, as you will know, assumes that we have a source domain DS with source labels TS for a given um, task and a target domain, which is related but not identical to the source domain, which may or may not have target labels. The domain shift describes the degree of difference between the two domains, where the greater the deg degree of domain shift, the more likely a model trained on the source domain will not work on the target domain. The aim of domain adaptation, therefore, is to find a feature representation which is invariant to the domain and discriminative for the task of interest, which we'll see if we replace domain with scanner, thus considering the, scanner, the data collected on each scanner with a given acquisition protocol to be a domain is the same as our harmonization task, searching to find a feature representation to explain the data, which is invariant to the scanner, but discriminative for the task we are interested in. The, one of the most popular methods for achieving this is DAN, which uses a gradient reversal layer to adversarially learn domain information. It, it considers the circumstance where we have a feature extractor, which creates this feature representation. The feature representation is then passed to a label predictor, which aims to complete the main task, and a domain predictor, which aims to predict where the data came from. We want our network to be as good as possible at the main task and useless at the domain prediction task. Thus, we want to minimize the loss on the main task and maximize the loss on the domain prediction task. These cannot be achieved in a single step, apart from the addition of this gradient reversal layer, which allows us to, do, to train this adversarially. Simultaneous deep transfer across domains and tasks aims to do the same thing, but rather than having a gradient reversal layer, performs domain adaptation by iteratively updating two opposing loss functions. One loss function aims to produce the best classifier given the fi fixed feature representation, and the other updates that feature representation as to maximally confuse the domains, thus forcing the domains to be random chance. This gives us an advantage over Dan because the confusion loss used to maximally confuse the domains gives an increased ability, which is useful if we want to consider multiple source domains. This was then applied in turning a blind eye for the explicit removal of known biases from the data. They consider the case where they try to predict age from celebrity images, but know that their data set is biased towards having much younger women than men. They therefore, show that the feature representation when trained on this data is entirely separable by sex, but that if they use the iterative updating scheme, they can produce a feature representation that is blind to that spurious variation, meaning that that information has been unlearned from, that feature, from the feature representation, and any prediction on the aged task has not been influenced by the sex. 
So how can we apply this to our segmentation problem? Our approach is to frame harmonization as a joint domain adaptation approach and hope that this will generalize to N data sets. For success in harmonization, it is important that the method performs across, well across both data sets. We don't want a model that only performs well on the target data set. We want to be able to compare all data sets we have available. Therefore, the features that we produce should be invariant to the scanner, but discriminative for the task of interest. And harmonization will ideally not decrease the performance on our task. So for in our case, the segmentation problem. If we consider the most generic architecture, therefore, we have a feature extractor, which creates a feature representation. This feature representation is then fed to a label predictor and a domain predictor. The label predictor is fed with the input data for which we have the main task label, YP, and the domain predictor is fed with, requires domain labels and is fed with a separate subset of data. This means that we can unlearn domain with data that, for which we do not have the main task labels, creating a framework which is generic and allows us to exploit all different data scenarios. The first step is to train the encoder and the label predictor on the main task. So this is the loss function for the main task, evaluated for each site separately. By evaluating for each site separately, separately, we are not driven by the larger data set, but consider all the data sets equally. And this loss function has the ability to update the parameters in the feature, uh, feature representation and in the main task, for the main task and requires the input data which has main task labels available. The second stage, we freeze the feature representation and only train the domain predictor given this fixed re feature representation using categorical cross entropy. As you can see from the loss function, it only has access to the, to the parameters in the domain classifier and is, uses the softmax outputs from the domain predictor to, to calculate the loss. The third step then freezes the domain predictor and updates the parameters in the feature representation and uses this loss function which penalizes variations in the softmax outputs of the domain predictor um, for their difference from a uniform distribution, thus trying to force the domain prediction to be random chance and for there to be no information remaining in the feature representation about which scanner the data came from. Therefore, you can see that this is the total loss function updated by the network, where alpha and beta are the weights for the different loss functions involved with unlearning the scanner information. And we can see that we do not require main task labels for, the, for unlearning domain information, meaning we can use different data to update the different loss functions. So when we consider the segmentation task, the obvious network to choose is the UNET. This is the go-to network for uh, medical image segmentation and for our purposes has the added interest of the effect of the skip connections on the effect of unlearning. So if we compare our network to the, what, the network we considered earlier, we can see that the bulk of the unit is, is the feature extractor, and we attach the label predictor to the, as the final convolution, and we consider the effect of attaching the domain predictor either to, just before the final convolution, at the bottleneck, or a combination of the two where we concatenate the fully connected layers to create a single feature representation. So we consider two data sets for this. We consider the biobank, a subset of the biobank data, which was collected on a Siemens Skyra 3T, and the healthy subjects from the OASIS data set, which were collected on the Siemens Tesla Vision 1.5T, and we split them into 2D, allowing us to train a two-dimensional network. We then use fast labels as a proxy for the manual labels, which are shown in the figure. This gives us gray matter, white matter, and CSF labels. So to our results, here you can see an example segmentation to show us that the segmentation is doing what we would hope. We have an example T1 weighted input image from the OASIS data set, the generated label from fast, and our predicted segmentation. And it can be seen that there is a high degree of fidelity between the images. First, we considered the fully supervised case. This is the case where we have labels for both data sets for all data points. And we compare the dice scores achieved by training on the biobank data only, OASIS only, training on both data sets with normal training, and training on both data sets with unlearning. 
it can be seen that we're using unlearning we achieve the same result as the best result achieved from training with normal training across both data sets but are able to reduce the scanner classification accuracy from 100 percent to 51 percent the scanner classification accuracy is the accuracy we achieve by training a domain classifier on the frozen feature representation and so a random chance indicates that there is no scanner information left in the feature representation and therefore a change from 100 to 51 percent shows that we were able to remove nearly all scanner information from the feature representation and the uh, box plots show that we were consistent across tissue types as well then we consider the semi-supervised case so we consider the case where we have labels for all the biobank data but very few or no labels for the OASIS data set. In this case, we update the primary loss function only for those data points for which we have labels, but we use all the data to update the two loss functions related to unlearning the domain information. Here we can again see the DICE scores evaluated from training with varying numbers of OASIS data set, of data labeled OASIS data points using all the biobank points across and what we can see is that when we have no OASIS data points, we could get a significant improvement for training with unlearning compared to with normal training, as the network is able to use the domain, um, use the domain on learning to create features which generalize better across the two data sets. We can also see that there is never a disadvantage with increasing number of training slices for uh, using unlearning showing that the method should be applicable to most segmentation problems. We know that in medical imaging, the limiting factor is also often the acquisition of labels, as this is expensive. And this shows that we should be able to apply our method even we, when we have zero or very few training examples available. Finally, we consider the location of the domain predictor. In this work, unsupervised domain adaptation in brain lesion segmentation, they showed that if the domain information was unlearned too early, the domain features were entirely reincorporated by the time the segmentation was completed, if they had not been entirely unlearned. But if, they would, if the information was removed too late, this constrained feature is vital for segmentation. And so they found that a combination of locations gave the optimal performance. Therefore, we chose to consider the, the final convolution, the bottleneck, and the combination of the two to see which gave the optimum performance. We saw, we found that if we unlearn only at the bottleneck, as we'd be expected, especially because of the addition of the uh, skip connections in the unit, by the final convolution, 100% of the scanner information had returned to the feature representation. We also found that unlearning from the bottleneck gave to a much less stable training and a reduced performance on the segmentation task compared to learning at the final convolution alone, showing that for this case, with this setup, it is probably the optimum location for unlearning domain information. So to conclude, we have shown that scan scanner information can be re removed using a joint domain adaptation approach, giving us the ability to harmonize data for a given task. We've shown that this doesn't hinder the, scanner the segmentation performance, while allowing us to know that, most of, that almost all the scanner influence has been removed. We've presented this generic solution and it will be applicable to any feed forward neural network or classification or segmentation problem. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact me.